welcome back. Bottom Line is a nonprofit organization that aims to reduce income disparities and promote economic mobility for students of color with a focus on achieving racial equity. Bottom Line's professional advisors strive to connect students with the right school and ensure that graduates' first jobs are places that respect their identity and offer a sense of community. Joining me to discuss this effort is the principal success advisor at Bottom Line, Jonathan Ramirez. Jonathan, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. So can you tell us a little bit more about Bottom Line and the work that your organization does? Yes, so we are a nonprofit organization. We were founded in 1997 in Boston, but since then, of course, we've expanded to New York and to Chicago with more regions incoming, including a virtual advising team that we are setting up in Ohio as well. And the main focus of our work is focusing on one-on-one -on -one direct student partnerships and services in order to connect them to the vital resources and uh, activities needed to graduate college, uh, first off to enter college through our college access program, and then also to uh, get through college and to pursue the career of their choice through our success program, which I'm a part of. Now, I'm so glad that you mentioned, uh, like, there's two aspects of this kind of, and it's entering college, but also graduating, which is a huge part. Uh, can you talk about why there was an effort, you know, in regard to that to focus on racial equity um, and just basically focusing on students of color? So as a data-driven organization, we have seen that there are tremendous gaps in college persistence and in college graduation, particularly amongst the, our student population that we work with, which are primarily first-generation or first-in-family college students who are students of color from high-need backgrounds. So we notice that there are tremendous gaps in college persistence and graduation in those groups. So our the reason why we're here, the reason why we exist, is because we are looking to close those gaps. We're looking to have these students also be successful in what they want to do, in what the careers that they want to pursue. Now, what are some challenges students of color face in regard to higher education? Particularly from a socioeconomic standpoint, it could be they are inherently in a place where there are difficulties from a financial standpoint, from a social standpoint, from an emotional standpoint. But purely one thing I would like to highlight would be the sense of imposter syndrome that a lot of our students face, which is the sense of believing that they don't belong, that why do I deserve to be here? Um, and that is one of the things that I and I know all of my team are looking to tackle, to eliminate in our students as much as we can, to let them know that despite you know, maybe looking different from their peers or feeling different from their peers or coming from different backgrounds from uh, you know, other individuals who may be in, already successful in the careers that they want to choose, they have the skill set. They, have, they can have the confidence, they can have the drive to then also succeed in those very same fields. So that's what we strive to really drill into our students as much as we can to let them know, hey, you belong here. You are also ready to be successful here. Now, I'm glad that you brought up imposter syndrome. It's something that everybody experiences at some point. Um, and I know that in regards to higher education, it feels like people are trying to get more students to feel that way. Uh, that kind of leads me to my next question. There's been a lot of controversy surrounding affirmative action. Can you just talk about how that like how those changes towards affirmative action affect some of the work your organization does with getting more students into college and eventually graduating from college? So unfortunately, we do see that the recent Supreme Court decision on affirmative action has led to creating an additional barrier for our students, quite frankly, uh, creating the sense of knowing that there is now a perceived uh, lesser amount of opportunity for our students to then be able to get into the colleges that they so choose. Uh, so we see this as an opportunity to redouble our efforts and to focus even more on providing our students with all of the resources necessary and also providing them with all of the confidence that they can have in order to then realize, you know, we can see this as an additional barrier, as an additional roadblock, but that doesn't mean that you cannot get into the schools that you want. There's still every opportunity in the world for you to get into the school that you would like to get into. It's just a matter of, of course, putting in the work, but also, you know, letting them know who you are, every element of who you are. And that would be exactly what is needed in order for you to get in. Now, can you talk about your professional advisors and why their guidance is so important for these students? So my colleagues um, and the wonderful advisors in Bottom Line and both the Access and Success team, we come from various backgrounds ourselves. We come from different socioeconomic backgrounds, different schools, different areas of New York and even beyond New York. So with that, there comes different pools of knowledge and different perspectives that we can all 
uh, put in together. And that really serves our students quite well because our students all come from different backgrounds, right? Uh, myself and a few of my colleagues, we all come from CUNY. Shout out to CUNY, of course. Um, but then we also have uh, colleagues who graduated from the SUNY system in various degrees, uh, colleagues who came from private schools and even schools outside of New York. So that also directly fits with our student body. You know, we do serve a vast majority of students in the CUNY system, but we also have students in the SUNY system, in private schools, and of course, students who may want to leave New York or be in schools around New York. So to have that pool of knowledge from our colleagues, to know different perspectives, different school systems, you know, different ways in which schools operate, that of course proves valuable in the student in working with the students that we serve because then they are also in these environments. So no matter which environment our students may choose, there are then advisors that can say, hey, I've been there too. I know what that's about as well. Let me help you through this. So to have those different perspectives all coming together has been proven to be extremely valuable. And also, how does that guidance you know, possibly help many of these students uh, prevent, you know, basically prevent them from facing the student debt crisis? So a lot of the work, particularly in our access program, but also, of course, going through our success program, a lot of that work also stems from making sure the, the choices that our students make are sensible, not only in terms of what they want to study, but also in terms of the financial implications of each school. We, we know, of course, that college can be extremely expensive, right? Mm -hmm. But there are different schools that can serve, that can offer different types of financial aid packages, whether in terms of offering scholarships, being a part of scholar programs, uh, being a part of programs such as SEEK for CUNY or EOP or HEOP. Um, so really what we want students to do is to ensure that they are making the best possible decision for themselves, not only in terms of their academics, but in terms of their finances as well, as there are many schools that offer reduced tuition rates and also being able to offer even refunds in terms of uh, tuition rates and the financial aids that the financial aid application that they have. So, you know, we want to make sure that, yes, this could be the right school for you, not just in terms of their academics, but also in terms of, OK, we are having a strong financial aid package, which means you may not even pay anything to be here, which, of course, would be the best possible scenario. Right. Now, I want to talk about, it's hard to believe, but it, it has been uh, nearly three years, or it has been three years since the pandemic, which means that a lot of college students now, or people entering college, have had their high school education affected by the pandemic. You know, can you just talk about that experience for a lot of these uh, young people who are now entering college? You know, how has that, how has that affected them in higher education? As we know, the pandemic affected every single industry. It really put all of us in a standstill, it seems. And organizationally, you know, we shifted into a fully online model throughout the height of the pandemic. And that really also, unfortunately, exposed a lot of the gaps that our students had primarily already faced, uh, which included then uh, access to technology, um, access even to adequate space in order to study because, you know, a lot of these schools were closed and e including social spaces were closed as well, you know, including libraries. And, you know, a lot of the students live with family members. Some of them may live with many family members. So it could be difficult for them to even find a quiet place to study, to focus on their work. Um, so unfortunately, the pandemic did expose a lot of these additional gaps that we then, as an organization, work tirelessly to navigate and to help our students navigate through uh, in regards to making sure that they have the adequate space to study, making sure that they have access to all the resources that the schools themselves can then help provide. Uh, in terms of ensuring student success as best as possible through the pandemic. And now that we are in our third year and trying to move forward from, from COVID, uh, now we've adopted more of a hybrid model. So we are returning back to seeing students in person as much as we can. And we are then seeing that students are now appreciating the fact that being in person can really be a very positive experience. I think a lot of people are now appreciating that uh, that fact. So thank you so much for mentioning that. Uh, can you just talk about, you know, how could supporting equity in college graduation actually benefit not only this, the student, but New York City on a larger scale? So speaking purely from an economic perspective, I mean, if we really think about it, uh, getting a college degree, of course, means hundreds, potentially hundreds of thousands, if not millions in terms of additional uh, income for students, right? For students who then become members of the workforce. Uh, this can mean future doctors, future lawyers, future teachers, future artists, future entertainers, you know, what have you. 
getting this pathway through college then means that they can acquire or have a pathway to then acquire the tools, the confidence, as I mentioned, the experience, the perspectives, the networks then necessary to then be able to acquire the career that they so choose, whether it be to be a part of the workforce or to open up their own business, to be an entrepreneur, things of that nature. Being Go, being a member of that college pathway, graduating from college, can then provide those additional opportunities to then be a member of that workforce, which, from an economic perspective, can then mean huge boons to, to us, to the city, to then see you know, who else can contribute to the economy. Now, so um, I want to basically talk about, you know, once they are in the workforce, you know, can you talk about the importance of making sure these students uh, or these people find a place where they have a sense of community? And can you just quickly tell us that because uh, we have about a minute left, but I definitely want to get that in there. Oh, sure. Yes. So from a virtual standpoint, we have uh, developed an online system called Bottom Line Connect, which we like to refer to as a LinkedIn application, but purely for our students. Uh, so from a virtual standpoint, we connect our students through Bottom Line Connect with uh, professionals in our partner industries that we work with, but also to each other. So then allow them to be able to work together, talk with each other about their experiences to help them see like, hey, I'm going through this, you're going through that, let's talk, let's see what this is about. And then to potentially help each other and to be each other's network. That in addition to all the resources that their individual colleges that then provide, and then being able to have direct partnerships uh, with other organizations, with other industries that can then provide internships, um, volunteering opportunities with our students, all of those can really lead to having more of a cohort, particularly amongst our students. Well, Jonathan, I want to thank you so much for joining us and having this conversation. Thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it. If you or someone you know would like to learn more about Bottom Line, please go to their website at www.bottomline.com. We've come to the end of our show today. I'd like to thank all of our guests for joining us and you, the viewers, for tuning in. If you missed any part of today's show, you can catch the Recable cast at 5 and 10 p.m. on Optimum Channel 67 and Verizon Files Channel 33, or watch anytime on the web at bronxnet.org. You can catch a brand new episode of Open with Darren Jaime on Wednesday and with Rina Valentin on Friday. I'm Kevin Aline, wishing you and your safety and wellness now and always. See you next time.